Hey, 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 our space fans! In this episode, we've got a story about a guy who's got a little bit of regret. I think we can all agree he probably should have seen it coming, but let's see how the story plays out. I never should have forgiven my wife of 18 years for cheating on me. Our story. We started dating in fall of 1997 or spring of 1998. Never been able to pinpoint down when the two of us became an official we. Definitely kissed her in 97, though we were pretty loose for a while. We'd go out on dates with each other, then other people, then back together, and began spending more and more time with each other, and by the summer, there was definitely an us. She got an apartment across the parking lot at the complex I was living in the fall of 98, and because of one of the ass clowns I was friends with at the time wouldn't move out, I basically moved in with her that fall. Clothes and bed at my apartment, slept every night at hers. We were happy, and by the fall of 2001, I asked her to marry me, and we were married in 2002. Spent the first several years together having fun and had our first child in 07, and his brother in 11. Been in a happy, committed relationship for 21 years, coming in on 17 married. We were realists that marriage is never perfect. It has its highs and its lows. We are both musicians and have always equated marriage to a good piece of music. It has its moments that are a forte, high and raucous, and its moments that are piasimo, lows wrought with emotion. We have always shared this sentiment with budding couples of newlyweds. Just roll with it and embrace it for what it is. If you don't have the lows and the fights, you aren't really living an authentic relationship. <laughs> we had it all figured out, right? We have had some recent stress. After living our entire lives in one region, we decided to take a jump and move to another part of the country. This was followed by a layoff within the first 18 months, leading to another move, even further from home. We now have settled into our new home and find the company we moved here for no longer has a home for us in it, leading to another job change. This has been hard on my spouse. Where it all went wrong. I have been suspicious of something going on for a while now and had begun really losing sleep on the issue. It began with an anecdotal story in July of last year about a coworker on a work trip in Vegas that had been sharing some very intimate company insider information with my spouse. She indicated that she should not have been telling, but was drunk and perhaps a bit lippy. It honestly sounded like pillow talk. Based on the nature of the relationship, I pointed it out to her and was a bit prickly when she mentioned him again, but passed it off on a friend relationship and that there was nothing to worry about. Then, as fall rolled around, there were more and more tells of something off. A change in grooming habits, some new lingerie, and some other little pieces. The biggest was one night while we were having sex, she began to cry. I couldn't figure out what exactly was happening. She mentioned that she was going through some stuff and might even act a little strange for a period and to not take it to heart, just give her some space. Well, all of this added up in my mind and I asked her several times if there was something going on and was she cheating on me. The night of Christmas Eve to Christmas, I decided I needed resolution and would take matters into my own hands by looking at her texts on her phone to find evidence. I did not plan for it that morning. Yes, Christmas morning while breakfast was being cooked in the glow of torn wrapping paper tossed around the Christmas tree. But I ended up with her phone, helping to transfer son's old to new phone, and did a quick review. Found the text I hoped would not be there, and the only words I remember seeing were, I cannot take you being all over me one minute and ignore me another. I was freaking devastated instantly. Freaking destroyed. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't stand. I couldn't talk. My son was in the room and said something like, You okay, Dad? I stumbled into the kitchen and told her I found a message on her phone. To her credit, we walked outside and talked through it. She claims to have given me the blow by blow and full disclosure. Three total events. One was in his apartment in another state where he has relocated and she was visiting for work while her company moves. She went over to cook hot dogs for a restaurant concept. He came up behind her and she leaned into it and kissed him back. They went into his bedroom and made out. She claims they stopped before either got naked and there was no sex. One more was two days later in the office in the other state. The last time was in the local office on 1214, 11 days before I found out about them. Later that week, she let me read the entire text chain back and forth between them. She and I both know this is only part of the story. They were able to talk in person, email, and work I am. I have not seen any of these other communications. From what I read, 
it appeared that the notion that they had not had sex was confirmed. She told me that they were done. The intimate relationship was done. But through work and the relationship they needed to have for the business, they would still be in contact. Initially, she indicated that they would work through intermediaries. However, that clearly devolved and they were rather quickly back to email and IM. I told her that I needed to know that they were finished. She needed to take decisive action to end the relationship so I could sleep at night and find a path forward. Needless to say, and to nobody's surprise, I was crushed. I was hopeless and in despair. I wasn't angry with her, but kept asking the question, why? Why did this happen? I have done nothing but love her and be patient. She even admits she is not the easiest to live with. We had fun together and knew when to give each other space. It was a success where others have failed? We returned from our trip to the other coast to visit family for the holidays and after a couple weeks, set up couples therapy. This was surprisingly a chore for her. I picked out a list of therapists and told her who I liked best. She told me she wanted a woman and took her time picking out one. We went to our first session and it appeared that we were in locked step to find a way forward. However, we stepped on a bit of a landmine. While our therapist was discussing the process, she said the phrase, this is what we will do if this is what you really want. For some reason, that triggered my wife to question what she really wanted. She needed clarity on why she chose to act on her urges and attraction to another man, in spite of her marital relationship with me. She asked for a pause on the couple's therapy, pointing out that each of us needed to work on ourselves first. She mainly needed to answer that question, why? This was crushing to me. How could she not know what she wants? Couple this with the knowledge that in spite of my repeated and clear request to end the relationship with him, even if no longer physical and was above the board, she was still carrying a friendly, fraternal relationship with him. Then the further blows come in that have absolutely crippled me. Thursday of 117. I'm taking the kids to basketball practice and ask her to join me, but she says she's going to work late instead. I drive by the office, seeking a quick hug and kiss. I am needy in this space, and her office is dark. She's not there. I confront her on the issue, and she claims that she had just run out for a forgotten waxing appointment. Friday of 118. I find the image of a text from him. Hide in the kitchen if I promise not to kiss you. Her response? Count to ten. I confront her and tell her to end it or I'm moving out the next day. When we meet up later, she says, I took care of it. I found out just days later, she did nothing. Monday, 121. She texts him and a group of friends at work. I don't know the details of the text, only that she texted him. Wednesday, 123. She returned early from a business trip. This is unheard of from her. Been with her a long time. I might remember a handful of times when she came home early from work, let alone a business trip. Thursday, 124. She goes to happy hour with work friends to celebrate a peer that was leaving. She says in advance he might be there. She later admits that he was, but she ignored him and they did not interact. Yeah, okay. That night, she turned off the Find My iPhone app on her phone, in spite of location services being turned off. I never could tell where she was. I later find a text of two of the friends going, urging them not to flake out. That she, my wife, had planned this happy hour only because he was there and that they needed to come too. Not this BS story that he might stop by. She planned the freaking event expressly for him to come. These events have killed me inside. Not only did she beat me down with initial infidelity, but she continued to dig the knife into my heart with repeated trauma. I have cried more than I ever thought humanly possible and even shared with her brief, oh so fleeting moments of hurting myself. I have talked to my therapist about this notion, I'm going to be okay. Yet she still took this selfish, inconsiderable action. I knew what was happening, yet I did nothing, like a freaking pussy. I told myself I loved her too much and needed her in my life, that I must find a way to trust and give her space while she seeks out clarity with her therapist. This crucial insight is paramount to me. I want her. I want to find a way forward, but she has to be 100% in it, not just there because of an obligation and comfort with the kids or I. I vowed to move out this weekend, even reached out to a friend to find a place to stay. Then Friday, she let me know that she has taken action to end the relationship. She spoke to him in person in the office on Friday and told him they could no longer have contact with each other. She told him that she was making a choice and that they were no more. She even offered me evidence in a text from him saying farewell and that they had each blocked the other's number for texting. I should be elated. I should be happy that there is an indication of hope for a shared future together. Yet I am skeptical. She is still the captain of her own domain. 
What stops her from acting out with him, or someone else, again? Can I live with myself that I allow her to deceive and disrespect me? How can I know that she is not taking my love for granted? It's a long path forward. I just hope we make it. Okay, I can probably see where this is going from the comments, but I'm going to read them anyway, because that's what we do around here. Fat Boy Slim says, Regardless of what you decide, your trust in her is broken. How to move forward is a question only you can answer. This said, Please stop doing the pick me dance. It will always work out against you. Your attitude from the beginning should have been, You want out? Get out. In a cool-headed brain frame. Crying, begging, calling her names, getting into arguments, doing the pick me dance will only play against you. The way you get your wife back is by simply showing her you have options, aka more than one woman in line to have something with you. So get a new hairstyle, groom yourself differently, and go out to happy hours with, pay attention to this terminology, just a friend from work, the gym, or whatever. None of what you do should lead to an argument. So get a gym membership, start your yoga, yes yoga, spinning classes, and get to meet new people. You need to have options. And these changes in appearance, style, etc. are for you, not her. These changes are meant to get you back. Excellent advice. And now, for the final update. One year later. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well and coping with the struggle of infidelity. I wanted to post a quick follow-up. I posted on here about a month after D-Day, heartbroken and traumatized, but hopeful that we would find a path forward together. Despite the actions, I was understanding and wanted it to work. I in many ways forgave her. Responses to the post unanimously were to end it and head for the hills. There was no recovery. I remember how disheartening this was. I just wanted hope and encouragement. People were saying I was doing the pick me dance. You know what? They were not wrong. She continued the affair, and despite thousands of dollars on therapy, she kept the relationship alive. And now after two years of heartbreak and a year of separation, we are getting divorced. So folks, I hate to say it, but a cheater is always a cheater. I am open to chatting about my experience with anyone. Would love to be the voice of hope for you, as bleak as it may be.